Hi. Thanks for joining me as we continue uh, talking about the journey. This is a series of videos. I think this is number 11 in this series. Uh, I'm calling it the journey. And I'm sharing these things from my heart um, for really only one purpose. I hope that um, these uh, offerings can encourage someone, um, perhaps uh, help someone to not feel quite so alone. Uh, the purpose of our lives, I believe, is not just to get to heaven when we die. That's a glorious destination, and I'm grateful for that destination. But uh, the journey between now and then is also vital, is also important. And the purpose of the journey, I think, is to learn to love God, to learn to love God's creation, to learn to love other people, all other people, including enemies, and to learn to love ourselves. And in order to learn to love, I think we need to get to know. To learn to love God, I need to know God. To learn to love nature, I need to learn some things about the world around me. In order to love others, I need to learn about others and uh, try to understand what it is like to, uh, to be in their shoes. Uh, exposure to other cultures and such, I think, is vital. And to learn to love ourselves, we need to um, learn who we are and where we came from. And so that's what I've been uh, seeking to share in these videos. Um, we left off with um, the central event of my life, um, a pivotal event, uh, the suicide of my son, my oldest son, when he was a junior in high school, committed suicide. And I talked about that in uh, the previous videos. Uh, I think it was about 1991 when I got a uh, call from Chuck Smith, the uh, pastor of uh, Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa, asking me if I would uh, consider uh, coming to moving to California to direct Calvary Chapel's Bible College. And so we sold and packed up and moved from our little uh, rural farm outside of Colorado Springs to the San Bernardino Mountains, uh, right near the uh, resort town of Lake Arrowhead, uh, which is a beautiful uh, spot in Southern California. It's Alpine Mountains. You have uh, four regular seasons. Um, it snows sometimes quite heavily. Um, but the winters are not what I would call harsh or long. Uh, and uh, yet you have four really nice seasons and it's a, a short, short drive or even walk out to the ridge and you're overlooking the San Bernardino Valley, uh, overlooking the uh, towns and cities down below. Uh, usually it's shrouded in smog Occasionally, because of the Santa Ana winds, you can stand there and actually see clear out to the ocean. Um, and uh, you're right there in the mountains where there are ski resorts uh, and lakes uh, for warmer weather. And uh, you're within a couple hours drive of uh, the desert in one direction, uh, the beach in another direction. Um, it's a, uh, it's, it's not hard to understand why so many people have over the years moved to, uh, 
California. It's a beautiful state. Uh, being the director of the Bible College was uh, a glorious season in our lives. Um, the opportunity to uh, get to know and minister to and with uh, students and and uh, faculty, teachers from all over the world. Um, lasting friendships were built. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, because of my position to fill in uh, pulpits of various churches around the area uh, when the teaching pastors were going to be out of town, uh, which gave me the opportunity to uh, uh, connect with lots of different people. Uh, so it was a beautiful time, a beautiful season in our lives, and the greatest thing that happened was the birth of our daughter, Emily. Uh, Kathy was told by physicians that she could never have children, and yet uh, at the age of 39, she did. Um, we did. And so Emily, so we have five children. Uh, Elliot is home with the Lord in heaven. Um, Becky today is uh, happily married and is a school principal. Uh, Rachel is happily married also, and uh, both Becky and Rachel are moms. Uh, Rachel uh, is very involved in ministry. Her husband is a pastor and she does a lot of women's ministry and such. Uh, Joshua uh, also has uh, children, lives in Chicago, um, and uh, is uh, active and involved in uh, his uh, work and friendships and ministry. Uh, Emily is now um, getting close to 30 years old. She's in her late 20s, and she is a journalist and a published author. Uh, so we have five children. We have eight grandchildren, um, all of whom, by the grace of God, are uh, doing well, all of whom are very different one from another, beautiful individuals, different lives and interests, but uh, doing well. Uh, so we are so grateful uh, for that time that we had in California. From there, um, we went to Hawaii. We lived in Hawaii, um, specifically on the island of Maui, uh, for about a year and a half, I think, um, and uh, helped several groups uh, get some churches started in the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, then we came back to Southern California and planted a church uh, in Orange County, Southern California, uh, which went well. Um, but I was feeling um, kind of isolated and alone and uh, wanted the connection that I thought maybe a denomination could provide. Uh, for me. Um, I felt like I, I needed the fellowship and I felt like I needed the um, accountability. Uh, and so even though I had, I was originally ordained in the Church of the Brethren, that Anabaptist uh, Peace Church that I spoke of previously, um, and I was ordained uh, again by uh, uh, I guess really you only need to be ordained once, and that's by God. But as far as human ordination was concerned, uh, I was ordained again by Chuck Smith and Calvary Chapel. Uh, and then the American Baptists uh, uh, received me into their fellowship and recognized my ordination from Calvary Chapel. Um, American Baptist is the mainline Baptist group uh, not to be 
confused with uh, the larger Southern Baptist group, which is more fundamentalist. Um, and the American Baptists have a long history of uh, connectedness with social justice. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. was an American Baptist, for example. And so uh, I, I felt connected there because I've always had a heart for social justice. Uh, always um, seen myself as uh, evangelical, um, taking the scriptures very, very seriously, and yet not fitting in with uh, the conservative politics of many white evangelicals. Uh, I was attracted to the American Baptist. Um, I, I think a big attraction was the uh, fact that it's a very, very diverse denomination uh, with uh, people of all backgrounds and ethnicities, and also with a wide spectrum of theological views. And I, I like that. Uh, so I became connected with them and under their auspices, um, uh, went to pastor a church in uh, New England. Uh, it was a, an old um, historic church that was had been dwindling down for many years. And uh, we tried our best to rev things up and met with only very little success. Uh, and so from there, sometimes I, especially in recent years, I feel like, um, I kind of feel like the U2 song, you know, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Um, always been, or often been restless, uh, not uh, fully satisfied. Is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how we discover uh, the answers to those questions, uh, except by day by day uh, seeking to walk with the Lord. So um, we were there in New England for a couple years. I love New England. You know, if you've been following along in this, these videos, you know that I uh, partially grew up uh, in Massachusetts, and so uh, it was a delight to be back there and to be involved in, um, just to be around the deep uh, historic roots of that area and the beauty uh, of the ocean and the sea and the inlets and um, all, all that uh, is, uh, as well as the mountains and uh, farms and such, small family farms. Uh, it's a beautiful area. Uh, enjoyed the time there, but still restless because ministry didn't seem to be quite uh, happening like I thought it was. Uh, and then I was invited to uh, pastor um, an American Baptist church in Indiana in a small town uh, the church was the largest church in this small town. That's not saying a whole lot, um, relatively speaking. Um, I, looking back on it, I think it was pride that maybe led me there, at least in part. Um, thinking that, that somehow I, I needed a bigger platform or something, I don't know. Um, I had really no clue about denominational churches, uh, either in New England or this one in Indiana, um, how they operate. I was used to Calvary Chapel, uh, and in Calvary Chapels, the lead pastor pretty much calls the shots and makes the decisions. And, um... Uh, I went in to it all full of ideas, and uh, the place blew up uh, within weeks after we got there. And 
uh, exploded with all kinds of rejection and anger and uh, it was it was a horrible experience and I personally deeply disliked the town uh, it was a, a, a very small town of in my opinion full of very small-minded people there was a lot of racism uh, there was a lot of injustice um, economically this little little town the whole county was dying it was going nowhere um, and so almost uh, shortly after I got there um, it's not even a pretty place <laughs> uh, I, I just knew it was uh, just not a good fit at all so I left that church under duress and uh, because we were building a home uh, I didn't want to abandon that project and to leave right away and so uh, made the mistake of staying in that little town and planting trying to plant a church there um, that's that's not a good way to plant a church yeah uh, you know churches that are planted out of church splits uh, are never a good idea I don't think uh, at any rate um, had a lot of good ideas that should have worked I think but they didn't <laughs> and so feeling like a failure as a pastor feeling like a failure as a church planter I thought well you know what am I gonna do to support my family um, and uh, an idea came to me I'm not sure where it came from uh, to be a uh, hospital chaplain um, I have a you know a background in some counseling and uh, I had taken courses you know in uh, psychology and um, was had a heart for people that are hurting and uh, broken certainly hospitals and hospice programs are full of people like that and so I thought I would uh, enter into um, a uh, training program to become a hospital chaplain uh, at the same time I finally enrolled in seminary uh, I did kind of everything backwards as far as academics were concerned so I enrolled in seminary which uh, I really loved I really enjoyed my time in seminary and uh, I also really enjoyed my time in uh, 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 professional chaplaincy uh, residency I took what we call CPE um, which is um, chaplain pastoral education and um, that's that was a in resident one-year program uh, it was in a hospital which was um, not too far from our house uh, so I was uh, able to essentially live at the hospital during the week come home on weekends um, learned a lot enjoyed the residency program um, very much enjoyed seminary and the things that I learned there and uh, then uh, was offered a job uh, as a hospital chaplain in Cincinnati which is why we now live in Cincinnati I moved we moved here in order to uh, um, for me to be a hospital chaplain and since then I've served in both hospital spittles in both hospitals and in hospice um, and uh, excuse me sorry <laughs> and for the most part I have enjoyed both of those uh, very much 
Although, again, I'm not sure that's my ultimate calling. Uh, I still haven't found what I'm looking for.